Stayallday.com. Before we start, please like and comment on this video so I can get your feedback. Also, click that subscribe button so you can get all the new content I'm dropping on this channel. And the free book, the mental handbook, physical book, work on your game university, just take care of the shipping and handling, send this right to your doorstep. Let's get started. What's up, everybody? Dre Baldwin, DreAllDay.com. Today's topic video is how to choose a school to walk on to. You want to walk on in college basketball. This is basketball I'm talking, but you can substitute any other sport, I think, with, this, with, with what I'm going to share here today. You want to walk on in your sport. We're going to talk basketball. You're trying to choose between colleges. Someone left me a comment, I believe, on YouTube. Might have been an email. Might have been a snap. I don't remember the other day. And they said, Dre, I know you talked about walking on, but how do you choose a college? There's like hundreds of colleges out there. How do you decide which one you're going to try to walk on to or go play at? How do you decide? I'm going to give you some tips here based on my knowledge, on my experience. And for those of you who don't know me, just to give my background on why I'm even talking about this, I started playing ball when I was 14. I tried out for the basketball team in my high school. I went to a high school called George Washington Carver High School of Engineering and Science in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That's where I'm from. Went to that school for the first three years, tried out for the basketball team, didn't make it any of my first three years. I finally made it as a senior and I didn't, I barely played. I sat the bench most of the season. So when I was coming out of high school, I knew that I wanted to play college basketball. I knew at that point that I wanted to play pro basketball. I didn't know how, when, where, what, I didn't know anything. But I knew I needed to play in college in order to get my game up a little bit more so I could be ready to play in the pros. So to go to college, obviously I knew I was going to be kind of choosing my college based on who accepted me. And then once I looked at everyone who accepted me and weighing in some other factors I'm going to get into, I needed to pick what school I was going to go to and then make the basketball team. So the first thing that you need to understand about choosing amongst colleges is that you first have to be accepted into colleges. You don't just pick the college. The college first must accept you in as a student, period, in order for you to walk on. So since you're gonna walk on to the team, you're not invited, unless you're an invited walk on, or you have a chance to compete for a scholarship or something like that, that type of conversation with the coach, if that happens, then you need to choose amongst those schools. But I'm having this conversation for people who, you have no contact with the coaching staff yet, there's no invite, nobody's expecting you to come or nothing like that. You're just going to walk in and go to like open tryouts where everybody can try out and you're going to try to earn your spot. That's what this video is about. So if you're going to do that, first of all, you need to get accepted into that college. So you got to make sure you got your academics in order because in the United States, if you're going to play college basketball, you are still a student athlete. Now, you may say, well, I'm not really a student because I'm really focused on making the pros, this, that and the third. Look, if you're playing at a school where you don't have a scholarship, you're not a scholarship player, you are literally a student athlete because if you're academics don't keep up you won't be playing the sport anyway because you're going to be ineligible and nobody's going to go out of their way to make sure you get eligible and you walk on who doesn't even have a scholarship nobody cares so you are a student athlete which means for you you need to make sure in high school the school you're at now you got to make sure that all your academics are in order and if you're at let's say you're at a community college right now you want to transfer into a college you got to make sure all your credits are in order make sure you all the credits, as more, as many credits as possible, transfer from where you are to where you want to go. Because the credits that don't transfer over could hurt your eligibility when you first get there. I had players that I played with in college who transferred from other schools, but all of their credits didn't transfer over. So therefore, they had to sit out because maybe they changed their major. They didn't have enough credits yet to be eligible to play their sport. So you got to make sure that your credits are in order. You need to go see your academic advisor or your high school counselor and make sure everything's in order based on the school you're going to go to because every school has different requirements for athletes so this is your responsibility to make sure this is in order it's kind of like running a business this is like doing the paperwork and the accounting you might not like it but this is part of running the business you as an athlete you want to be a pro you want to play in college this is the part of the business you must take care of if you don't take care of this this can hurt you it can keep you from even getting on the court or in the field or whatever sport you play in a pool or the ice so make sure you got your academics in order. Go talk to your counselor, talk to your academic advisor. If you don't have access to them, it was impossible for you, not, for you to not have access to them. You're paying to go to school there, they work there. So you have access to them. On top of that, on top of that, you need to go to the NCAA website. You wanna play college basketball, go to the NCAA website, find it, Google it, you know how to Google, and look up the eligibility requirements for athletes in your sport. Look up the eligibility requirements so you know what exactly makes me eligible to play my sport. What is the bare minimum that I need? Now understand this, the bare minimum that you need may not be the same as the bare minimum at that school. 
So you may get the NCAA bare minimum, but then if you go to Penn State, there's a higher standard that Penn State has above and beyond the NCAA standards. So you gotta meet not only the NCAA standards, make sure you hit those, but then once you start looking at schools, make sure you have the standards to actually be eligible to play at that school, even if, if you happen to go there and if you happen to make the team. So these things you need to take care of before you even start thinking about what school am I gonna choose. As far as the NCAA requirements, again, Google, you know how to Google and find information. If you are not competent enough to figure that out, but you can watch a YouTube video, then you're lying to yourself and you're not serious. I'm not here, I'm not giving you no links to where it is. This is work that you need to do. If you're serious, you will go do this work. This is easy work if you're serious about playing college ball. So that's the first thing. Make sure all your academics are in order. Make sure your credits are in order. Make sure you're eligible to even play based on your academic performance up to this point. All right, here's the next thing. You have to actually get into these schools, which means you need to apply to every school you want to go to. Every school you want to play for, you must officially apply to go to that school. And again, if you are walking on, you need to apply. Don't expect the coach to handle it or the assistant or none of that because you don't have any of that because you're not even on the team. You're not a scholarship player. You haven't been offered anything. You need to go apply to every one of these colleges. I'm going to tell you what I did. Just that I, didn't, I don't think I even told you about the rest of my background. So when I was getting out of high school, I went to the school called Penn State Abington. I walked on my first year. Penn State Abington was, at the time, you could only play two years of sports, but it was a four-year university academics-wise. I actually got accepted into the main campus of Penn State right out of high school because of my academics. But I went to Abington because of just a financial situation for my family. I walked on to the school there, played there for one year. I got recruited that summer to go play at Penn State Altoona, which is the NCAA Division III school, and I finished out there. So I got recruited to a D3 from a two-year university is kind of set up like a juco as far as athletics but it wasn't a juco it was a regular college four-year college but i got trans i transferred on recruitment to a d3 and then i ended up playing basketball overseas after that you can read my story at my website the link is down there below so the next thing you need to do is you got to apply to all these schools now my situation when i was graduating from high school i had really good sat scores i don't remember what i scored on the sat i think a 13 something and then I had great, a great GPA, and I went to a school that's called a magnet school, which meant my GPA weighted against all the other GPAs in the city of Philadelphia was even higher than it was at my school just because the course load was he heavier. The classes were supposedly, I guess, harder because of the school that I went to. So my GPA was really high compared to other students. So I got all these, what they call fee waivers back then. Mind you, this is the year 2000 and, and 1999 that this is happening for me. I don't know if they even still do it this way. But colleges would send me mail, and they would have this fee waiver, which basically said we want you to apply to come to our college. You don't even have to pay the application fee because colleges have these application fees for you to apply there. You got to pay money to apply to go to school there. That's just a money grab for colleges, in my opinion. Actually, it's not a pen, it's a fact. It's just a money grab for them. But anyway, they would send me these fee waivers. So I applied to every single school that sent me a fee waiver. I just applied because I had nothing to lose. All I had to do was put in the application. So I did all those applications because I had good grades in good all those fee waivers i applied to all these schools i got accepted to like 13 colleges <laughs> i got accepted to all these colleges i got accepted to like usc uh the school called david lipscomb in tennessee i got accepted to morehouse morehouse actually offered me a 50 percent scholarship but being out of state it still would have cost so much money for me to go there i never ended up going to morehouse i thought i was going to go there but i didn't so i got accepted to penn state again to the main campus right out of high school and my parents came to me like late in the process and said, look, we're not going to be able to send you to Morehouse because that's where I thought I was going to go. Just go to Abington for one year or two years because it was local to Philadelphia. I could drive there and be a commuter because Abington didn't even have campus housing. There was no on or off campus housing in Abington. Everyone lived like at home who went to Penn State Abington. So they said, go there for a year or two. Then after that, we'll see what the situation is. I ended up getting recruited to go play ball at Altoona. So that took care of itself. So you need to go apply. You might have to pay for these applications based on your academic situation or whatever colleges are doing these days. I don't know if you even have to pay to apply to colleges anymore. I don't know what the situation is. You need to know. You need to find out what the situation is and apply to these colleges. You got to be accepted to a college to go play ball there. If they don't accept you, you can't play ball there anyway. So you actually don't have hundreds of colleges to choose from. You need to, first of all, identify based on your academic profile, what school are you even eligible to play at? Are you even eligible, period, to play sports when you go to college based on what you've done so far in college? Now, when it comes to actually choosing a school, when it comes to choosing a school, if you're going to walk on, if you have anything to offer a coach, anything, like you have some video, 
Maybe the school is local. Maybe you could go play there, play pickup or something so you can show the coach what you can do. Do you have anything like that to offer a coach something? Video, they're local and you could go play with them. There's some way the coach can see you play somehow, some way. Contact the coaching staff. I talked about this in a walking on video. If you didn't see the walk on video, look it up. It's here on YouTube. And it's also at that link right here, dreallday.com slash help. That's where all the help, tips, guides, videos, everything for every level of basketball and off the court is all at that link right there. But contact the coach if you have something to offer. Again, this is very important. If you have something to offer, you contact the coach. If you have nothing to offer, i.e. you didn't play in high school, you don't have any good video, nothing like that, don't contact the coach. Like, what do you want to tell them? Hey, coach, I'm a great player. I work hard. I can jump high. Can I make the team? Like, listen, you can get on them. Anybody can say anything on the phone. Even if it's all true, don't contact the coach with that because the coach don't want to hear that. They need some proof of you being somebody doing something. If you have no proof, that's okay. Don't contact the coach, though. Right, don't waste the coach's time with that. If you got something, contact the coaches. If you have something, look, contact coaches. When you get someone who's interested, that's the school you can go to right there. If only one coach is interested, then that's probably the school you should go to. They're interested in you. They saw something in you. They at least know you're coming. You at least got a little bit of a step ahead of everybody else who's going to be coming to the open tryout and things like that. You're a step closer to being on the team. I would say take that offer. Now, if you're also in a situation, you're trying to choose a college, and you're looking at hundreds of colleges again, are there any, what's the word I'm looking for? Are there any restrictions that you have based on your location, based on your financial situation, since you're not getting a scholarship? Can you afford to go to, if you live in Houston, can you afford to go to University of Washington State? Can you afford to go to USC? Can you afford to go to NYU or Penn State or some school in Miami? Can you just go to anywhere? Does it not matter? Is money not an object? If it's an object for you, then you need to narrow your choices down based on your situation. And you need to be realistic about the situation. Are you paying for it? Are your parents paying for it? Do you have loans? Do you have academic scholarships? What is the situation? If someone offered you a scholarship, a partial scholarship or any kind of grants or financial aid that you apply for, what is that going to cover and what schools can you go to based on those grants and that financial aid? That's another question you must ask and you must compare it to what choices you're looking at. This is all work that you must do. All of you who want to play sports in college but you haven't done much in high school you don't have a scholarship offer this is work you got to do you got to do all this background work and if you're not willing to do this work then you're not willing to play college sports this is stuff that you need to do now if you're in a situation where you only got accepted to a few colleges let's say you only got accepted to one school or you only got accepted to three schools listen then now you're on now you only got three options so the kid who reached out to me said it's like hundreds of colleges yeah there are hundreds there are hundreds of colleges in america but which ones did you get accepted to uh, which ones can you afford to go to which ones make sense for you based on your life situation hundreds of them or probably four or five or maybe just one so you got to narrow all that down so you know what your real choices are not i could go to any school because most people can't go to any school what is your real situation based on your family your money and all of that and of course your academics and of course the team that you're going to try to play for you got you also need to do this basketball thing look at the roster of that team Look at the level of players that they have, and this is something that I really can't tell you how to do this, but this is purely subjective based on your opinion. You gotta look at that roster and ask yourself, can I make this basketball team? Can I make the basketball team at this school? Can I go to this school, this D1, this D2, this D3, this JUCO, this NAIA, and can I actually make the team? Do I have the ability to make the basketball team at this school? And you gotta keep it real with yourself on this one. This is one that I can't tell you whether you can or you can't, I don't need you to leave a comment and tell me all the skills that you have. People always leave me comments on YouTube, tell me all the game they got, and then ask me what I think they can do. Listen, I don't believe nothing nobody says in a YouTube comment. All right, just, just as a PSA, you tell me how much game you got in the comments. I'm not, it's going in one ear and out the other. I'm not believing a word of what you said. All right, just because you say you got game doesn't mean you have game. And just because you say you, you're serious and you did this and that doesn't mean you actually did it. If you're talking about it, you probably ain't doing it. That's my opinion in general. Not to say that if you said you're good, doesn't mean you're not. Most of the time, the people who do all this usually ain't got the stuff that they talking about, at least in the comments. You got game, prove it. You got to go to the school and prove it. You got to look at those schools and say, can I actually play here? Can I make the team here? Can I compete here? Because if you choose wrong, you choose a school that you can't compete at, and then you go there, and then you try out, and you realize those players are three levels above you, and now your career is over, hey, you chose. That was your decision. Now, I would say you choose a school where you're going to actually make the team. <laughs> All right, if you want to walk on and make the team, you got to choose a school where you'll make it. You got to be realistic with yourself. Can you walk onto a D1 and make the team? 
I know everybody talks about it. I know everybody says it because it sounds good. It sounds it makes you sound ambitious, like you got goals and you're confident and you believe in yourself. I get it. But you do all that talking, you got all that belief, then you show up and get your ass kicked in the first two days of tryouts up and down the court to the point that you don't even look like you belong on the court and that's it for you. Hey, it was your choice. You did it. And this is the last part I'm gonna leave you with. You're graduate, you're out of high school. Usually when you get out of high school, you're 18 years old, 17, 18, 19 years old. You are now an adult. You are an adult. At this point, the decisions you make, you must live with them. And you must make them, first of all. You must make the decision, first of all, and you must live with it, second of all. I am not gonna make your decisions for you. I'm not gonna tell you whether you should go take a, go, go to college, take your scholarship off, or go try to play overseas. I'm not gonna tell you whether you should walk on to a D2 or a D3. I'm not gonna tell you if you should go to a D1 or go to a community college for a couple of years. You need to decide that for yourself. You're over 18, you're out of high school, you're about to go to college. College is for young adults to transition from childhood to adulthood. That's, that's what college exists for. At least I think that's what it first came about for. Transitioning from being a child dependent, completely dependent, to somewhat independent, then to being completely independent. That's high school, college, and out of college, adulthood. So you learn to transition to adulthood. Start by making your own decisions. Think for yourself. You must think for yourself. Looking at everything that I laid out here, there's a, a lot of gaps here because I can't give a specific situation for each one of you because I don't know your specific situation. And even if I did, I'm not going to tell you what to do based on your specific situation. What you're gonna do is take what I share with you in this video. You are going to apply your ability to think and you're gonna say, okay, based on the information Dre shared, and then looking at my situation, so this is Dre's information, this is my situation, the gap between these two is you thinking. You're gonna think to close this gap so you can see how this information applies to you and how you can use it to get to where you wanna go. That's your job. That's work that you need to do. And the reason you need to do it is because you're growing into being an adult. You might already be an adult. You might already be doing things on your own. You might already have a job. You might already be doing your thing. Well, guess what, keep doing it. Adults make their own decisions and adults live with those decisions, the consequences of them, whether they're positive or negative. This is your life. I'm not going to decide it for you. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I will give you all the information I got, and I share more information at that link right there, more information in these vids than any human being you can name. It ain't nobody you can name who shared more information than me. Nobody. So what I'm telling you now is that you must empower yourself to start thinking for yourself, because that's what adults do. And if you want to be a professional in basketball, in anything, you gotta empower yourself to make your own decisions. That's the only way you're gonna have any power. Any questions that I did not answer, anything I did not cover, leave it in the comments. Anything that I gave you that you didn't know about, anything that's been helpful, useful to you, leave it in the comments. Y'all see where I'm at on Snapchat, at Dre Baldwin. Hit me on Snap, I'm active on Snap, I do reply to Snap, she asked me a good question, I will respond to you. And again, this link right here, dreallday.com slash help, is also down in the, in the metadata below. That is where I got all the guides, tips, help off the court, on the court, mental game, training, nutrition, personal development. You wanna play college, you wanna play overseas, dealing with coaches, getting more playing time, you get nervous during the games. Everything is covered at that help page on my website, dreallday.com slash help. Everybody, I gave you what I know. Now it's on you. Good luck, get to work. Work on your game, dreallday.com. Hey, witness on the beat.